Hey there everybody, what's up? WandaVision, that's what's up. Now, to be fair, I did actually watch episode 7 of WandaVision on the day that it came out. It's just a lot of things have happened uh, in the last 48 hours that I couldn't really do a review for it until now. But I'm here now, and let's talk about episode 7 of WandaVision and Breaking the Fourth Wall, which uh, it, obviously it's a reference to uh, everything being revealed and uh, you know everything that happened at the end of the episode and also the uh, mockumentary style of the episode, which is uh, inspired by certain sitcoms of the modern age like The Office, Modern Family, and Parks and Recreation which have contributed a lot to uh, this episode and its uh, structure and its design. So uh, yeah, first of all, I, I like that. I mean, I, I, first of all, uh, just um, going all the way back to episode 1, it was incredible not just, not just, just to see how uh, the show was uh, referencing certain, uh, well basically almost every uh, sitcom, uh, through the decades and through the generations, but also was incredible to see just how much television in general has progressed from the 50s all the way to the 2010s, which is when uh, this um, uh, show takes place. And obviously, it kind of takes place in the 2020s, but uh, yeah, that's some uh, MCU stuff that we're not going to get into. In, uh, we're not going to get into in the moment. So. Yeah, like I said, uh, I love how this show showed us the progression of televisions and sitcoms in particular and how everything kind of uh, went decade by decade, mostly uh, with every decade. Now, uh, going into this episode itself, uh, Wanda kind of has uh, broken down. I mean, I, I assumed this would happen after the last couple of episodes that she's uh, been in. She's losing control of her power, I guess, expanding the hex bubble and uh, as she calls it, uh, the false world she created around herself. I guess that took a toll on her, now she's starting to lose her powers. But I'm also thinking there's something else going on here, going back to pr the previous episode, uh, especially the commercial, because the commercials and the ads, they add a lot to the, uh, to the show, no pun intended, obviously. They really add a lot to the show uh, and to the narrative. Uh, going back to, like I said, the, the, the commercial with the shark, and the whole, uh, when I'm hungry, I'm feasting on your magic. Something is stealing Wanda's magic, or rather feasting on it. Something is taking away her magic, adding her magic to their own magic. Which, I'm assuming that's why uh, everything is falling apart around the apartment. Everything is kind of flipping between the decades and between generations. Like the game consoles for the kids, switching from modern day stuff to more uh, uh, retro gaming. And all, all the way back to playing cards. And obviously also the, the milk, and then obviously the television also switching uh, from a big widescreen TV to like a, a small uh, black and white television, the house itself falling apart. And all of that was just a sign that Wanda is losing her magic, she's losing her grip on reality, she's losing her control over this false world she created. Something is definitely happening with her, and after what happened in the last couple of episodes, especially with Vision, and with Pietro and stuff, she does not want to get involved in anything. She says she said it in, by herself. She wants to punish whoever is doing this. I'm assuming she doesn't even know who is, but she wants to punish whoever is doing this by taking a day off just to herself, not you know giving into the temptations of the rest of the day, doing whatever it is she's supposed to do in in the show itself, whatever whoever the the showrunners are telling her to do. So I, I like that aspect. Too bad it kind of came back to bend her on the behind later, but we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, let's talk about Vision. Vision is now uh, f uh, fully aware of himself. He knows, it, well, not exactly, he knows exactly what happened in the previous episode. He's still not aware of everything that happened prior to Westview. He has no knowledge of the Avengers. He has no knowledge of Ultron. He, he doesn't know anything. All he knows is that he's alive, and he's living inside this false world that um, Wanda has created. Still not... 100% clear how he knows who Pietro is because he clearly referenced him by name. So there's a lot of uh, a little bit of inconsistencies with his character in this episode, but I'm pretty sure that all of it all will be answered soon enough in the next uh, two episodes. Obviously, he, meet, he meets up with Darcy, who was uh, socked up by the uh, the, uh, the the hex vortex, along with the rest of the uh, the sword base, who are now became carnival clowns and carnival performers. Uh, obviously, I was expecting like a lot of people, other people that Darcy would turn into her two broke girls character in that show. She didn't, but her transformation really makes sense because she was handcuffed to a car, and and so she became an escape artist in chains, and she was able to escape. I mean, it, it makes sense in the context of the episode itself. She was even 
chained up next, standing next to a car, which is where she was standing uh, before she was taken by the hex. Everything makes sense in, the, in that regard, and obviously they, she's in full character, she's not aware that she's in a TV show, but uh, then obviously Vision wakes her up, the same thing he did, he, he did to Norm and to Agatha, but because she wasn't inside the Hex for as long as those people were, uh, she was only been in for a couple of minutes, maybe even a couple of hours at the most, uh, she's able to quickly uh, regain her uh, full grasp on reality, mostly because she's watched uh, the show for the last uh, week, as she mentioned, so, so she knows exactly everything that's going on. So it doesn't seem like too much of a surprise to her in particular. Now, obviously, they didn't, they didn't escape, and then she explains to him everything that happened um, along the way. But uh, I, I kind of thought it was funny that she says, she, he says, I have a lot of questions. He's like, I got all the answers. Uh, wh uh, what happened to me? I don't know. Who are the kids? I don't know. Uh, wh who is that imposter Pietro? Beats me! So like, she says she's got all the answers, but she doesn't have all the answers. He's got some answers. Obviously, I, I love the, uh, the scenes where they're in the, uh, the van that they stole. She's explaining to him all the history. We learn a lot about, her, about Vision and his current state of mind, everything that's going on with him. And uh, we learn that Darcy is more than an aware of everything that happened, uh, like with the Sokovia stuff and, uh, Endgame, so uh, apparently all of this is information that was released to the public. I'm assuming it's because uh, Captain America, who has been seen in Endgame in support groups, talking to people, uh, comforting them uh, after what happened to uh, uh, the world during the events of Endgame. I'm assuming that's it's all public knowledge. Maybe not some stuff that the government wants people to know about, but also stuff. Uh, it's stuff that Captain America thought that uh, people does have deserve to know. They have the right to know. Also, uh, Darcy was. I believe, guess, employed by S.W.O.R.D. I mean, she does have connections to uh, uh, Jane Foster and Thor, so she, she's gotta know some stuff, I'm assuming. Also, she's connected with Eric Selvig, which I believe was also employed uh, by S.H.I.E.L.D. for a long time. So, yeah, she, Darcy knows a lot of stuff. That, that, that's just uh, my assumption of how she knows all of it. Obviously, uh, they try to get to Wanda, and Wanda, I don't know if she's consciously or unconsciously trying to stop them with all the traffic lights and the construction workers and stuff, so... Wanda is clearly... Well, someone is trying to keep uh, Darcy and Vision away from Wanda. I'm not sure if it's Wanda at this point, because I don't, I don't even think Wanda is even aware that Darcy is even in uh, the um, uh, the Hex. I don't, I, don't, I don't think she's aware of everything that's happened. I mean, we saw in the previous episode that a lot of the people on the edge of town are stuck without moving. So, whether it's the... The extent of Wanda's uh, magic has been stretched to its limits, or maybe it's because she doesn't even know that, that they're there. So she doesn't even know that they have that she has these puppets that she can control. I don't know. Everything seems weird to me. Is it Wanda doing this? Is Agatha doing this? Is there like a third um, um, component that I'm not even considering at this point? I I don't know. I try not to have too many theories and speculations about WandaVision because. Pretty much every single episode disproves every single theory that I had, and it starts up a bunch of new ones. So, again, I want to get caught up too much in uh, the assumption game. I, I don't like to play the assumption game, especially not with a show like WandaVision. But then, obviously, uh, let's talk about the ad for a second there. The ad, which I... Th First of all, the commercials. I love the commercials and the ads. Uh, in this show, I think they add a lot, like I said, to the story, to the narrative. Uh, we get to see that these Nexus pills, which it, it basically it's re referencing real-world uh, anti-depression medication that's been used now. I mean, it's a modern-day ad. It's no longer like mo advertising a brand new toaster or a new highly expensive watch. It's a modern-day ad. It's an ad that could be seen on a real television network today. I mean, I even have friends from the United States who honest, who watch um, Disney Plus and, who, and they actually believe it was a real ad that was during um, uh, the, the show and they, they thought that uh, they were fooled by it, which is the intention that uh, the Marvel writers had when they inserted that ad and made it so realistic to, to, uh, to assume that it was an actual ad. And let's talk about the ad itself. Uh, Anti-depression medication, you know. So Wanda is definitely uh, dealing with a lot, and this ad is kind of a me mental representation of everything that's going on with her in her life. It's named Nexus, which could be a reference to the Nexus of all realities, you know, existence in and of itself. It's also, uh, someone pointed out to me that uh, Nexus was the name of uh, 
the um, Switzerland net computer thing that Jarvis stopped Ultron in in uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, right? Uh, Avengers, uh, sorry, Jarvis kept stopping Ultron from hacking into the system right before they took Jarvis's uh, uh, consciousness and put it into Vision, which in the same episode we have the same conversation of Darcy talking to Vision with Vision realizing that his uh, consciousness came from Jarvis and his body was based on Ultron. They had the Age of Ultron connection while uh, the ad was going on with the whole Nexus stuff. I don't know, there might be some, some connection to that. It might, might be just uh, me overthinking it a little bit. But then obviously, I don't... Let's get in... Let's get... Uh, this review has already gone on long enough. Let's get talk to the, uh, to the end of the episode. The kids. Where are the kids? What did Agatha Harkness do with the kids? Like, are they gone? Have, have they went back to uh, where they came from? Did the kids ever even existed at all? I don't know, did Wanda create them out of nothing like she does for a lot of stuff on the show? Or did Agnes create them and, and it was all just a manifestation uh, from Ag Agatha's powers in the show? I don't know, did, were the kids ever real? Like, this is again what, what I'm saying. I try not to have too many theories and speculations on the show because I never know if I'm right or not, especially on a show like this. It's different from a lot of other shows where you could have speculations and maybe they'll turn out to be true, maybe they won't, but I don't know, th this show is just way too complicated for my uh, small, feeble mind to understand. So Agnes, she was still known by Agnes at that point, she takes the kids over to her place and she, she sort of looks after them, maybe, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure yet. Did she look after them? Did she put them somewhere safe? I don't know, but when Wanda goes into her house, the kids are gone, they're missing, there, there, there are no more kids, and she walks down to the basement and it's this... Stranger Things upside down type of a stuff with all these root magical roots growing in everywhere and she walks into the basement she sees the dark hold from the comics which is kind of an interesting thing because the dark hold I believe I believe its first MCU appearance was in the first Doctor Strange movie in the library and then we see it again in season 4 of uh, Agents of Shield and then it pops up again in this I don't know if it was the same dark hold the entire time but um it was it, it was definitely the dark hold. It had uh, the, the symbols on it, the magic. Now the dark hold is like the, I can't remember exactly what it is, but from the comics I know that it's um, the source of all magic and stuff, or, so, or evil magic. It's a, a, like a thousand different uh, vampiric scrolls that were kind of uh, gathered together over the centuries and put into the one one this one big hardcover book and I believe it's also the origin of all vampires and I, I, one of my favorite uh, storylines from the comics was uh, Doctor Strange, Blade um, and um, Hannibal King I believe and maybe one more person teaming up uh, to destroy the Darkhold and kind of end all vampires uh, with uh, and kind of try to kill Dracula because Dracula does exist in the Marvel comics so Obviously, we know that WandaVision is going to continue on to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Wanda is definitely going to be a character in uh, that movie. And I believe also possibly Monica is going to be a character in that movie. Also, we haven't even talked about Monica yet, which is something we definitely have to uh, consider. But uh, yeah, so I'm guessing this is just more um, Doctor Strange connections. And I'm guessing I'm, I'm now 100% convinced that Doctor Strange himself, Benedict Cumberbatch, will be in either the next episode or the final episode. I don't know. I, I just I, maybe it's just me overthinking things, but I want to see Doctor Strange make an appearance in this show, and uh, which will lead on directly into um, Doctor Strange and the, and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, that, that's just uh, that, that's a prediction that I'm sticking to at the moment. That's the only prediction that I'm going to make on this uh, recap show. And uh, that's the one that I'm sticking to. So, if I'll be proving wrong, then I'll be proven wrong. So I don't care. I don't mind being proven wrong about this. Uh, fine. But also, the, then uh, Agatha reveals herself to be uh, Agatha. Sorry, uh, Agnes reveals herself to be uh, Agatha. Agatha Harkness, which I'm not 100% familiar with from the comics. The only thing I know about her is that she appeared in one Doctor Strange comic. Again, Doctor Strange, uh, because I'm a Doctor Strange fan. But uh, she appeared in one Doctor Strange issue that I've read, which was part of a May major. A crossover event and she was like a mentor to Wanda and I believe my friend also uh, looked it up later she, she in the comics she was considered to be one a, a mentor 
to uh, the Scarlet Witch, which is Wanda's character in, in, in the comics. So, here's another prediction that I want to put out there. I don't think Wa uh, Agatha is the villain. I definitely do not think she's the villain. I think she's trying to protect Wanda from something. I think, something that I said previously in this review, that there is something else afoot. There is a third component trying to take away Wanda's magic and Agatha is trying to protect Wanda uh, by saying that she's the villain. She doesn't want want because even Wanda, she says to Monica that uh, Monica tells her, "Don't be the vil don't let him make you the villain." And she says, "Maybe I already am." So Wanda views herself as the villain of the story, and Agatha probably doesn't want her to think that. I think Agatha is trying to protect her by taking on the villainous role herself. So again, I have no idea what is happening on the show, and I love it. I love. Not knowing. In any case, uh, final thoughts. I loved uh, the photon reveal. I love it when Monica uh, she failed to walk into the uh, back into the um, into the hex with the armored uh, truck thing. So she so she just said, "Well, screw it. I'm walking in," and she becomes photon, which is another version of Captain Marvel from the comics. Uh, we see a lot, we hear a lot of uh, the quotes from the Captain Marvel movie. A lot of the stuff that. Um, her mother told her, and all, the, and Carol and Nick Fury told her when she was a little girl, and she becomes, uh, she gets her photon powers. We didn't really get to see her manifest her powers too much in this episode. I'm guessing they're saving it for the next episode. And then obviously uh, the post credits scene, we see uh, Pietro is back, or fake Pietro is back, and he drags her down to uh, the basement, which I'm assuming she's going to team up with uh, Wanda. They're going to put their differences aside and uh, try to fight Agnes, Agnes, which again, another prediction, I'm assuming they're going to fight Agnes together, or Agatha is going to say that, uh, no wait, you don't understand, I'm trying to help you, and then they're, they're not going to believe her, they're going to blast her away, escape, and then that's when Vision is going to catch up to them, and then uh, she's going to reveal that uh, everything has been happening. I don't know, that's just a crazy prediction of my uh, on my part, maybe I'll be proven wrong, I don't know if I will, but uh, yeah, that's just my... Really quick thoughts on this on the show. Wow, the show is really going overtime. I guess that's just uh, the problem of having a show that's so a show that's so short but yet so dense and, and has so many stuff in it. It's not like uh, the Mandalorian, which really really took its time uh, in in revealing stuff. And this show is really it has a lot of stuff in it, and I absolutely love every single episode of the show. Uh, some episodes more than other, others, uh, obviously. In any case, that's my quick uh, opinions on this show. Uh, and this episode in particular. What did you guys think about this episode? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, this review has already gone on way too long. So uh, I'm going to leave you uh, with that and with my uh, quick thoughts on this episode. So that's all I have to say for now. And until the ne next episode, WandaVision! Hello again, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Because I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time guys, I'll see you guys next time.